Okay. So this time, right, we are going to assume in Python, there's this module called deep time. So I'm going to import that one, import this time, right? So that module has a lot of things. It does a lot of things. You can use that one to get the current date time. You can also get uh, the format to save instead the format of the date time object or string that you have. So I'm going to do print. Uh, Put this one up so that's when I print something becomes clear. Print date time dot date time dot now, right? So this will return the current date time. It starts with the year, the month, the day, the time to start with the hour, the minutes, the seconds, then it goes to thing. Is this is this Jiffy or time? No, this is Jiffy. I don't know, but this is part of the date time, right? So this is a raw format of it. You can see this is in a raw format or in a raw state, right? You cannot display this to your, let's say some old woman who is using your mobile app or something. You have to refine it in a way that can read like September uh, 4th, 2021. You get it? Uh -huh. So with that, you know, you can see that the date time, as I mentioned, has parts. It has the date, the year part, it has the month part, the day part, the hour part, the minute part, the seconds part, right? You can you can use the you can use a variable to get the individual parts as well, right? So I'm going to create a variable called x, and then I'm going to equate it to the date time dot now method, right? Right, so I'm going to print um, the month alone or the year. If you want. So I can do x dot year. And then when I try to run the test file, it returns 2021. Okay, so if I'm to do same to the month, it's going to return nine that's september right and then the same for the day it's going to be 10 four okay so you get a flow right okay so the first one we got the entire date and then the time but if you want to get only the dates you can do x dot date with the bracket so that means the date is a method or a function right then it will print out only the dates in its raw format. That's uh, 2021 Okay. And the same for time as well. I want to return 20, I mean, the current time. Okay. So with that, you've seen how to get the date and time with Python, right? Now we're going to see how to reformat this. Now, I'm not going to use Python's date. I'm going to presume a user has entered a date into my um, 08, 01, right? So in this, this is a string because this is, this is in a quote. So this is, a string of characters. Now, with this, when I try to do print x dot d, right? Uh, I'm not. I don't think it will return. Okay, yes, exactly what I expected. It return an error. It says that attribute error. str object has no attribute d. Do you get it? So to be able to get the d out of this string, I first have to convert it into a date time object before I can work with it. I hope that makes sense to all of you. Yes. All right. So to do that, Python has a beautiful way of, of, of working around that one. So we'll do um, 
formatted. Let me name the variable formatted. Formatted equals to date time dot date time dot str p time. So you can see it is showing the hoover or the predictor or the autocomplete one is is showing strf time and then strp time so there's a difference between them the first one what it does is if your date time object right let's say the x itself is already a date time object then the f time will convert it into a string right but in our situation it's already a string so we need the p time which the p stands for pass p a r s e pass so it will pass it into a date time object that's what i'm going to use and then i'll put the x right and now the x the p time takes two parameters the first parameter is a string and then the second parameter is the is the format of the string so you can see that this has a particular format it has the year first the month follows and then the day comes last right so when you go into Python, well, you see that Python has formatting. Um, date format strings of this or meta characters that we used to format dates. So percentage always leads with it. Why is this not working? So percentage Y stands for the year, capital Y stands for the year. Percentage small m stands for the month that's from 0, 1 to 1, 2. I mean, from January to December. And then percentage uh, d or small d stands for the d, right? Okay. There are different different formats we are going to go through them as well but let me just print out what this will return format formatted right let's see so it has returned a date time object you see it even has the time as part of it the date comes first and then the time follows all right so with this one i can now do dot day and then my wishes will be granted that's one which is this particular part of the string any questions so far any confusions so far it's okay all right all right so now we we'll, let's continue so the next bit is um now we we have to to check right this this on the side to check whether a particular variable is of a type of so let's say a date type a string type a number type or whatsoever python has a way we do that right you can just do uh type right and then when you run the this file it will return that this particular variable that I'm checking the type is a date time dot date time type. I hope you guys can see. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now it has shown that for us. Now we, we have a, a variable which is already data. Now we want to now pass it back into a string like what i showed before so i can now do uh, let's say variable called back to string right equals to wow my idea is smart so it has done it i just have to change the p to f now when i print back to string right and then i run it it says an error, str f time missing argument format. It also takes format. Now I have to pass the format as well. So since I'm taking it into a string, right? 
I can specify whatever format I want. I can decide to only get the year part of it, right? Which will mark me as 2021. I can decide to only get the month part of it. You see, zero eight. Or I can decide to get the full date. See that return the full dates like what we actually the value of x that we created initially, right? Okay, so some of the date time formats I'm going to list them here as a string. Uh, we have, I mean, as a comment, we have y percentage, percentage where we've seen that one already. We have percentage small y, which will give you the shorter year, so let's say 20. The 2021 to just return. Um, let me do the example here so that we'll see. To just return 21. You can see it here, 21, right? And then we have the D to give us the day. And then M, small m. We have capital H to give you the hour, right? The hour, you know the hour, we have different type of hours. We have the 24 hour and then we have the 12 hour, right? So the capital H returns the 24 hour. And then we have capital I, which returns the 12 hours, hour type, right? And then we have P. So small p determines whether we have, it is AM or PM, you get it. So Python, actually make it, makes it very easy. There are a lot of documentations on this. If you're after this, you guys can look up to it. You see all the maths that there are, there are a whole lot. I don't think I'll be able to list all of them. All right, so the next thing we'll have to talk about is exception handling. Yes, I'm a, yes I'm any question, please. kindly ask. Yeah, I was trying to run uh, the examples that you were doing and then Whenever I run, it gives me an error. Okay. It tells me a no, the no. Yeah, it says the object has no attributes. Of maybe if I'm trying to display the year, it says it has no attribute of year. What could be the issue? Okay. So, <laughs> can you share your screen? Robert, will he be able to share his screen? Sure, sure. Okay, you can, can share. Yeah. Share your screen, let's see. Okay, I'm coming. Amate, are you following? Are you also practicing? Okay, um, please, can you see? No, really. I'm not home, so I'm not using PC. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can see. We can see okay. your screen. You can see your screen now. The okay. now, right? The date time dot now is it's a function. With a function, it has the opening and closing bracket always at, at, after it. You get it. So that is why you are getting that error. Then let me do the same for the one in the, oh, no, the, the one in the print statements too. Okay. Yeah, you're using the new Windows, and eh? that's nice. Windows 11, right? Yeah. Oh, nice, 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 nice. So I think if, if I should print now, it should work right. I run it. Yeah, print, let's see. Okay, I'm coming. Okay. Okay, it works now. It works, right? Awesome. Yeah, it works. Awesome. All right, can you give me back my screen? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. All right.
You can have it now. All right. So any other question? Okay. So for exception handling, I'm going to just create another file for that. Right. Okay. All right. So in programming, right, we have different types of situations that you might face an error. You see the error that Amate is it Amate or what name? Who was that? It was Benin. Yeah, Benin. Ej, sorry. Yeah. The error that you are facing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's assume you you written the code. You forgot to do the opening and closing bracket after the now method, right? And then you've pushed the code to production. See the error that came. That error is not presentable. It is not a, an error that uh, the normal human being who is who goes by their day without thinking about what coding is, will understand. Do you get it? So that's where exception handling comes in. It handles those kind of errors, and then it, it enables, or it allows you, the developer, to display a more presentable error message to the user. Do you get it? So sometimes when you're using the system, you see an error message like, server not working, or Server failing or server busy or all those errors, they are much technical error messages which are being handled for you to get those simple or I mean presentable error messages you see. Do you get it? All right. So that's where exception handling comes in. Right. So examples of this error. So I'm going to I'm going to do one example and then we'll see how or what I'm talking about. Let's say this far, right? I just go and then do print X, right? Print X, and then I run the file. So Python 3 exception, right? See the error that's showing here? It says that name error, colon, um, name X is not defined, right? So I cannot show this trace back error message to a user, my user. Otherwise, it will tell me that ah, call me code name do I the system error there's too much error in the code. The system is not solid and all those things. So for me to avoid that kind of comments from my users, I'll wrap this particular statement in an exception handler, right? So, so this is how it is done in programming. You do the try. And then your logic statement here. Let me put that in comments here. Or a possible failure here. And then accept. And then that one will come with a presentable or yeah, presentable message or another possible failure. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so now I'm going to put my friends X here, right? And then I'm going to do print X is not known here. Right. So you can see it, it does return X is no known here. Instead of re returning that trace back error that we saw earlier on. Okay. So that is what exception handling does. It, it's it first tests the first code, the block of code in the try statement. If there's any error, right? If there's any either syntax error, yeah syntax error or uh, compiler or interpreter error. If there's any of them, then it goes to this accept block, right? And then it works with that one. If that one too has any error to there's another level that it, it's just likely to go to, right? So in our situation, 
the error we got was name error, right? But let's assume uh, we know we know we are going to get a name error. So now we can do name error. I don't know whether we have to import this. Do we have to import this? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it worked. So let me see a global or something. All right. So it says that X is not. But let's, what if I'm returning a, a value error instead? These are types of exception errors that you are likely to face in your code. So that's why I know them in my offhead because I face them a lot of times. So if I'm to check for accept the value error type of exception, right? It still retains that name error, name X is not defined. Okay. Is there any confusion so far? All right. All right. So I'm going to do a proper line of code and then we'll use to test, right? Input, um, let's say age equals to input, uh, enter your age. Right. And then, uh, no, I want to do a calculation. So number one, enter your first number. And then number two. Oh, okay. let's just use the operations method, the operations module we have. So we are going to import operations as OP. Right. Okay. So we are going to do addition. Try addition OPS dot addition and then we'll have a list of numbers, but we're going to have one string in it, right? Before we even do this try, let's just have this as a variable. Uh, let's see. Right. I'm expecting to get an error. So print. So you can see we have uh, type error unsupported operand types for int and then str. So we are, we are getting an error because of the character S we have in the list, right? Okay. So to take care of that, we can use exception handling. Yeah, so we can do try. Uh, accept type error, and then we'll print. Please ensure all the values are numbers, right? They see that return the error. Please ensure all the values and numbers. But when I change it back to four, and then I run it again, see that it has added it. It didn't come with the error. It has printed the add option. It has printed the addition of the one to five, which gave us 15, right? So any questions about this? We'll be using exception errors. I mean, exception handling a lot because I mean, when you're writing your project or you're doing your system, there are a lot of things that you, you, I mean, it will keep your mind logically. So the best way you can handle them is to use exception handling to make sure that the error doesn't bounce back. 
when, when you're testing it or something. All right, any question? Not really. Uh, Samuel Kofi Jima, please, do you have any question? No, please. Okay. All right. So that's a bit of exception handling. Uh, I'm sure you guys, when we, when we move into much advanced situations, we will know that how best to use it or a more useful use cases. All right, so we are going to move on to object-oriented programming. Right. So the underlining or the main focus or the main aim of object orientation or object oriented programming is to model coding or your logical thinking into the likings of a, a, a real life or a physical object, right? So when you pick a stone, right? A stone has attributes, a stone has things that it can do. You can use a stone to hit somebody. You can use a stone to break a lock. You can use a stone to grind uh, pepper or onions. You can use a stone to do a lot of things. So those are the operations of what a stone can do, right? But when you pick the stone itself, it has attributes. The stone is shapeless. Uh, some of them have color. Uh, what again can we talk about a stone? Um, then these two, and it is rough. The surface area of it is rough, right? So it's the same as a human being or an animal or a bus, a fan, a TV, a laptop, everything in this world, every physical thing in this world has its physical attributes and then things that it can do, right? So that is what object orientation actually aims at. We, we try to mimic or model real life things as programming or as code to make sure that we use it to make or to write our systems to solve problems as well. All right. So with the OOP concepts, right, it has different, different, different concepts under it. We have classes, we have objects itself. We have um, inheritance, we have polymorphism, we have constructor, we have super, we have um, what again, abstraction, we have, there's this one, what's it? The interface, there's, there's one too called interface. So it's a whole lot, right? It's a whole lot. Some programming languages are very serious about it. When you talk about Java, Java actually is very serious when it comes to object orientation. They actually use interfaces as well. They use inheritance, they use polymorphism and all that. But Python is lazy about when it comes to these things. Python always looks for the, the features or the concepts which are more useful. I mean, in real life, you get it. There's, there's not much of an instance where you use <coughs> polymorphism or you use even interface but it's there's a more realistic situations where we will need to use a class an object inheritance and all that so the things that i'm talking about we are going to practice them after this time has ended right when we join the next time so when we talk about what a class is a class is a blueprint for creating an object with attributes and methods if you remember in the first session, I, I mentioned that the difference between a function and a method is that a function is not in a class and a method is a member of a class. So to do that, we are doing it, <laughs> you have to repeat it as well. So if a class has attributes and methods as its members, so like I said, the attribute of a stone is it is shapeless. It has color. Um, uh, it has rough surface, right? When we talk about the methods, which are the operations, you can use a stone to hit somebody, you can use it to break something, you can use it to grind something, and all that, right? So those will be the different methods that you can have under a stone. 
or for a stone. Do you get it? Right. But let's take another instance. Let's take the instance of a school, right? A, a school can have attributes like classrooms, um, uh, what again, what again, faculties, and yeah, all those could be, I mean, number of faculties and all that. And then we can come to operations that a school does. It's that the a school admits students, a school uh, great, great students, a school employs teachers and all that. So those are the unique or the special methods that you can have under a school class or a school as physical being you know, a life, a real life being. All right, another instance. Please, I want you guys to give instances so that you, you try to relate it to what a class and object is. This is a discussion session before we go on to the next one. Or oh, you guys don't understand what uh, what I've been talking about. Emmanuel Champon, please you want to say something. Can you say something? It's like the rest of them are not here. Hello, are you guys there? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so I think uh, example of class, at least for the explanation. Let's say we can have vehicle as a class uh -huh. and under vehicle uh -huh. we can have uh, see a car an aeroplane we can have uh, let's say a boot car bicycle motorcycle okay so those who those will be considered as let's say types of vehicles right so that will be like an attribute in a vehicle class called types of vehicles right yes. Yes. Um, and, and then the very some of the attributes. Uh -huh. Continue, I'm listening. Yeah, so I wanted to also pitch in that under let's say a vehicle like a car, uh, we can have, let's say, in a way a method like uh, drive, we can have reverse, we can have brake. Yeah, like the car braking, like as in you are stopping the car, right? And then you are driving yeah, in the car. Those will be operations that you can do with the car. Yeah, you are right. All right. For 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 the knowledge you have, we have right now. The understanding we have right now, we can see it is right. All right. Any other person? Yeah. So, yeah. Let's. Let's take a football team, for example. In the okay. football team, every player or every um, person in that team has a role he or, he or she plays. We have the coach, okay. technical director, and we have the players. players. Each of them have the position they play, goalkeeper. Okay. And also, there are people who... Um, washes their uniforms. Others also sit and um, learn an opponent's tactics. Yeah, so when they all come together and go against a team, they all bring what they have, they all bring what they have together and then they put it, um, they all bring it together and then they, um, I don't know how to put it, but they all bring the ideas they are having together yeah, yeah. and they form a great team. Yeah. So you mean the football team will be like the class and then the players will be like, you have a number of players as attributes, a coach attributes, and then you have operations like uh, uh, football match, right? To go and play a football match or uh, an operation for I mean, discussing their format, their formation and tactics and all that. Yeah, I get, I get what you're trying to say. It makes sense. It makes sense. What about Samo Kofijima? Yeah, okay. All right. 
All right. So, uh, so what I was about to say is some of the importance of functions, right? I mean, sorry, classes is that it helps you organize your code well. I mean, so if you have a particular class for a football team, right, then you organize it in such a way that you have everything concerning the football team in that particular class. So in the events that you want to get something about the football class, you can just call the football class that you've created and then use the operations or the attributes that you've already created. I don't know whether it makes sense now, but it will, don't worry. So let's say you have a football class and then you want to know the number of players you have. So you just call the football class and then you reference the number of players that are in that particular football class. All right. So it helps you organize your code. It also uh, makes it re re relatable to real life objects, like I said before, right? And then, um, I mean, object-oriented programming is what most of the frameworks out there are built on. When you talk about Laravel, even the JavaScript frameworks like Angular, uh, TypeScript. TypeScript is all about object orientation. And Django, uh, Zen framework. I mean, all of them, they make use of the object oriented programming because as a framework, it makes it very easy for you to. You know, a framework is a is a, is just like a container of different different features put together. All right. So I would like us to sign off and then sign in again so that we can continue with the practicals of it. Right. Let, let, let me restart the Zoom for um, the last session. <laughs>